I'm going to ask you to start your computers up and create a brand new project in BlueJay. I called mine the grading project because we're going to use grades, which obviously you're all familiar with how grades work. We're going to use that as an example to demonstrate some of the pitfalls of using if statements, if then else statements, that type of thing. And our goal today is to take a numerical grade and convert it into a letter grade. And we're going to do some simplifications. We're going to assume that grades that are 90 or above are an A, that are 80 to 89 are a B, 70 to 79 are a C, 60 to 69 are a D, and any grade below a 60 is an F. And so what we want to do is we want to write some code where the method is going to get a numerical grade and it's going to give back a letter grade. We're not going to worry about pluses and minuses today. It's just going to make things too complicated. We're just going to worry about the basic grades, A, B, C, D, or F. That's all we're going to worry about. So I've created this grade project. I've created this dummy class called demo. And I'm going to open up that dummy class now. And don't worry about this word static. We'll talk about it in a few weeks. Uh, this is going to return a string which is going to represent the grade that is going to be created by this method. And uh, I'll call it uh, calculate grade. And it's going to take an integer, which is going to be the, the numerical grade. And uh, it's going to return, uh, I'll create an answer variable, string, and I'll call it string grade. So, and I'll start by assuming an F grade, but once I process the grade, it's probably going to change. And then at the end, when I'm all done with my processing, I'm going to return this string grade variable. So in here, I have to write some code to convert this Merkle grade to a string grade. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up some test cases. And so what I'll do here is I'll say uh, string answer equals uh, calculate grade and I'll start with an easy one I'll give it a hundred okay so I'm gonna create some numerical grade I'm gonna call the converter method with that numerical grade it's gonna do its processing and give me back a letter grade and then I'm gonna print both the numerical and the letter grades to see if it's working so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write the rules for the grades. Okay, so those are going to be our rules. So we're going to just start off with an F, and then I'm going to ask you to write some if statements here. I'll write one for you. I'll say that if uh, grade is greater than or equal to 90, uh, String grade equals A. I'm going to write another one here. And I'm going to say if string grade is greater than 80, it's a B. Now, some of you are probably already realizing this is not going to work, but I'd like you to write it like this for me with the other grades also. And then we're going to discuss why it does or does not work. All right. And my question for you, we've sort of finished the Boolean expression part for the most part for unit three, and now I'm focusing more on the if statement part, which is the other part of unit three. And my question for you is, if I give it 100 and I go through this logic, without running it, I want you to talk to your partner about what grade is going to get returned in the system for a hundred grade using this logic right here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, Ms. Erda, any idea what grade is gonna get returned by this logic here? Look, I got a hundred here. It's gonna be an A, right? Let's try it. Oh, that's not good. It gave me a D grade. Now, I would like you to discuss with your partner why it came back with a D grade instead of it. It didn't even come back with an F. It came with like a D. That wasn't even one of the things we were considering, was it? I want to know what's wrong here. Okay. 
Now, um, normally at this point I ask for a volunteer, but I'm going to show you something really important. I'm going to show you how to debug a program using breakpoints. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on line numbers. See if you can figure out how to turn on the line numbers on your uh, on your Blue Jay. Has anyone found the line numbering? Yes, sir. Mr. Garofalo, where is it? Okay, right here. So we have to turn on the line numbers. And you can see that once we do that, these tiny little line numbers will show up on the left. Now, notice that if I just brush my mouse against these line numbers, I don't know if you can see it or not. You'll see it better on your screen. Do you see a little red stop sign shows up as I go across these line numbers? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a stop sign right here on this very first line on this method. And what this basically is telling the, the machine is that normally when we run Java, you know, we just run the whole thing and it just gives us an answer. But this time I don't want that. I want it to actually stop on this line and I want to be able to inspect the code and I want to step through here one line at a time or however I wish. And so I'm going to show you how this works. So we're going to run again. And you can see now that this other window has shown up. And this window, in order for you to see what's going on here, I'm going to split my screen into two pieces. I'm going to put the code over here and the debugging window over here. Now, I have to explain to you what's going on. The, the code is actually frozen at this point right here, indicated by the green bar. It's important to understand that the line right here in green has not executed yet. It's about to when I tell the program to step, but right now, it has not executed. What's showing over here is the call sequence. And basically what it says is you ran the calculate grade method, uh, which was run originally from the main method. So this is showing you a stack of all the methods that have called each other. And you can see that the only variable that's alive right now, because remember, I'm in this method. So the numerical grade variable is not alive right now because I'm in this method. I'm not in this method anymore. And so you can see that the only variable that's alive is this grade variable, which is a parameter to this method. And I can see that here. If you create other objects or have other static variables, they would show up in these windows. And now one of the things that I can do here is I can do a step. And when I do a step, it's going to execute this line and then stop on the next line. So let's do that. And we're going to see right here what happens when I step. And you can see that now it's created this other variable called string grade and set it to an F. And that's this line right here that previously had your stop, uh, stop sign on it. Notice that the grade variable is still set to 100 and the string grade has not changed yet. So when I hit step again, it's going to execute the line that's currently shown in green. And since the grade variable is greater than 100, is this line going to get executed, yes or no? It is. So look over here now. And you can see that uh, it's checking right. Oh, it's, a, it's about to execute this line right now. So let me run it one more time. And you can see that the string grade is set to an A. And it looks like everything is going to work out great here. And we're going to get our A grade for our 100. But then a strange thing happens. Look what happens when I step again. It asks the question, is this 100 grade greater than 80? And the answer is yes. So it executes this line as well. Yes, sir. So now look what happens when I step. Look, it just it executed this if statement. And that was a true clause. And so it set the grade to a B. And now if I step through the rest of this, you'll see that they all execute. And since all of these conditions are true, it first sets it to an A, then it sets it to a B, to a C, and then to a D. And then it returns the last thing it was set to, which is going to be a D. Now watch it. I'm going to follow it back as it comes back to the main method. And you can see that it just finished that. And then when I step again, you can see that the answer has been set to this D variable. And then if I step one more time, you can see that the print statement executes. So it turns out that there's a bug in my code here. And now what I would like you to do, uh, let's take off this uh, stop sign for a second. What I'd like you to do now is rearrange these statements. Listen, don't rewrite any of the code. 
just rearrange the statements so that the method works as you want it to. Just rearrange the lines. That's all I'm asking you to do. So I, I got some feedback, sir, from a college professor this summer saying that the freshmen that are entering college don't know how to debug their programs. And as soon as he said this to me, I realized that I have not done a good enough job teaching students how to debug in CSA. And the reason I haven't taught it is it's not on the AP exam. But I realize now it's really important. So now going forward, starting this year, I'm teaching debugging. No, every every IDE is going to have a every IDE is going to have a uh, a, a breakpoint capability. Okay, so I would like a volunteer to tell me how to rearrange these uh, statements here. Miss Missone, can you tell me how to rearrange these statements? Okay, very good, Miss. So I'm going to just move these around. And now I think it should work. So let's compile it again. And let's run it. We're not going to need this debug window for now. But, oh, and if you get into this thing where it's telling you it's still running, you just have to hit this little reset button to reset the virtual machine. And then you can run it again. And you can see it gives you the right grade. Just to make sure that our code is working, though, let's try it with some other grades here. Let's try it with a 76. Hopefully, it will give us a C. Now, let's try it with a 40. And it looks like it seems to be working. So that's good. All right. So you can see that one way we could fix this grade problem was by rearranging the if statements. Now I'm going to ask you to fix it another way. I'm going to go back to the way that it was originally written. And I'm going to ask you to write the other sequences in this order, A, evaluate the A, the B, the C, the D, and, and that's it. Uh, but I would like you to use um, compound if statements. So stuff like this, I'll give you a hint here. It's going to be if something and or or something like that. Uh, maybe use an and or maybe use an or here and then use something else here and then say string grade equals B and I want you to, I want you to figure out what, what goes in here and then do the same for C and D please do that now yeah there's a lot more to it especially when you have objects and arrays and things like that but I might do a little bit more when we get further along also okay that's perfectly good uh, question for you, will this also work? So this tends to confuse students because a lot of times you write stuff like this similar to this in math. This will not work. This operator needs a number on each side of it, and you can see that this is not a number. So that's why you need to separate this out into two separate expressions and then connect the and together. And then the rest of it is quite simple. We're just going to copy and paste the other one, the other grades here. And so we now have another way of writing it like that. I'm going to show you a third way to write it, and then we'll call it done for today. Now, you remember the first faulty example that I showed you? We were assigning multiple grades. We were first assigning the A, then it turned into a B, then a C, then a D. How come I don't have to worry about that here? That's right. So if one of these triggers, let's say the A grade triggers, it won't even consider any of these other pieces of code. It won't run any of those. So you can see that this is another way to solve the problem. Let's just try this out. This one, we have a 40, you should create an F grade. And now let's try a different grade. Let's try something like a 76 again. That should create a C grade. And you can see that that's another way for it to work. So depending on your personal preference as a programmer, you've got three different ways of approaching this. Does anybody have any questions about the if statements that we saw today? So switch methods are a perfectly good use for this, except for the fact that switch methods only switch on individual values. Here we have a range of values. The other thing is that switch methods are not used, uh, not on the AP exam for CSA. Switch methods are not on the AP exam for CSA.